morning and welcoming everybody to our official nine o'clock start time of Cooking with a Veg Coach. That is me, Ellen Jaffe Jones. I'm actually going to take a minute to um, just close one of my other apps because the worst thing that can happen is a technical boo-boo and I just hate when technology doesn't work because it's really embarrassing when you're putting it out there like this which is not always an easy thing to do. So as people are jumping in on the call, please feel free to say where you are from and we will get started. I'm Ellen Jaffe Jones. I am the veg coach and the broccoli rep, as I like to say, because who else is? I am a certified personal trainer and I am a certified running coach as well. I'm also an accomplished athlete. And of course, I just can't resist doing this. This is, um, as of this past weekend, I placed in my 86th 5K race or longer. And I actually got second. That was a race, the, the Hunger Run, not to be confused with the Hunger Games, up in the Tampa area. And I always like to drive into the big city sometimes just to compete there as I have in the other 85 races that I've done. And I do this just because I always wear a vegan shirt, unlike what I'm wearing tonight. Um, and I like to just show that vegans can get out there and get plenty of protein and muscle, yes, from eating all that you're going to see here tonight. I'm also the author of Eat Vegan on $4 a Day, uh, Kitchen Divided, if you can see them way in the background there, and Paleo Vegan, because I got so tired of hearing all my running friends who were saying, not all, but many, uh, who were saying, I'm going Paleo because I'm going to get so much protein and I want to eat like our Paleolithic relatives did in ancient times. But truth be known, National Geographic back in September said the real Paleo diet was way more vegan than it was uh, meat eating. And you can check out their story or um, basically it, it supports a lot of the concepts that I wrote about in the book. And that's a whole nother story. But tonight we're going to be cooking recipes from Eat Vegan on $4 a day, uh, specifically Penny for Pennies, which is on page 95 if you have Eat Vegan on $4 a day there. Hopefully you've had a chance, you got some advance notice maybe to pick up some of the ingredients and we'll actually cook together. That's my whole point in doing this live because it's just so much fun, I think, when we can cook as a group. I have done cooking classes forever. <laughs> Um, officially as a trained cooking instructor for the National Nonprofit Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine and their little spin-off group, well, not so little, but called the Cancer Project, where for six years, sometimes twice a day, five days a week when, we, when the classes were free, and that was fun, um, we would have 60 people in each class up at our local Anna Maria Island Community Center here where I live. And so it was great fun. But um, obviously, it's a lot easier to be doing classes like this. And hopefully, as I continue to grow this, we will get tons more viewers and um, people who get access to eating like this. And maybe the benefit of my 35 years, give or take, not completely the whole way, but most of the past 35 years as a vegan and a runner. I was also a TV investigative reporter. And I'm going to be really obnoxious. I don't usually do this. But um, you know, we're here locally in my home. This is one of two Emmys that I won in my TV days. And um, my husband was also an investigative reporter in Miami. And, um, you know, we just kind of uh, were about truth, justice, and the American way. And really, as I began this journey, mom and post sisters had breast cancer. I was just trying to figure out the truth about food. And I have nothing to sell. I have no hidden agenda other than I have three daughters, and I would like for them to grow up in a world that is a lot healthier than the one that I grew up in, which was most of my childhood spent in hospitals as the youngest child watching uh, my relatives get really sick and in some cases um, they just didn't survive. So we were part of the original breast cancer gene studies. That's another one of my passions. Mom, aunt, both sisters had it and uh, you know two of the cases they think were not related to um, the gene. That it was lifestyle related because they were late in life cancers. So 
you know, it's an interesting journey as we go down this way, and there's, there certainly is a lot you can do to turn off your genes or not get them triggered and started in the first place, and there's a lot of research now coming out about that. So let's get started with our first recipe, the Easy Bean Salad. Now, I've done a little bit of homework here for you before we get started, and I just wanted to, oh! don't do that yet yeah, you know should not <laughs> don't you love live TV okay so I would like to show this like to you I love to look at food as kind of an artist palette that we start out with and I am just gonna have to figure out a better way to show this once we get going but I have combined some cannellini beans and let's see if we can really pick that up there and you can see it and I get dyslexic on camera here um, we have some black beans yes oh they're very black and right into the computer uh, keyboard not so good for the keyboard um, some garbanzo beans I mean you can use any beans you want here and we're using I used one can each here um, although the recipe calls for uh, three cups cooked of each of the beans in the recipes but it's really what is ever available and uh, these are some pinto beans right there the dark ones and cannellina beans can also be white beans they're, they're sort of used interchangeably and then some frozen corn um, and some frozen edamame which is soy in its natural state how cool is that all right so soy you know, if your doctor isn't telling you to avoid it, there's no reason to avoid it. And the only reason you might want to avoid it, and this always comes up, so I'm just bringing it, bringing it up uh, at this point, is that um, if you have estrogen receptive breast cancer, there's some controversy about that. Now, I will tell you, two of my sisters that I know of had estrogen receptive uh, breast cancer, and I am pretty sure they never ate soy. And I have always eaten tofu and, uh, you know, not a lot of processed soy. But, uh, you know, is that a significant study? I don't know. My Asian friends tell me that, uh, you know, they and their cultures have eaten soy forever in its natural state. Again, edamame. And you can get the edamame like this um, from the store. This is also frozen in the pods. And so my Asian friends say, you know, their cancer rates as a culture is way less than ours. Um, so I got to think, you know, if you're eating a ton of, processed soy where the soy um, is very concentrated then maybe you have issues I don't know I'm not a doctor I need to make that very clear all right so the edamame you can get out by biting the edge oops <laughs> don't you love live TV all right so that's what gonna oh, my keyboard is gonna have the best be the best fed keyboard in town honey I need a new computer all right, so that is one way you can eat it. And then, of course, um, it came the way, I, what I put in the salad came just from this bag, also frozen. Hmm. Oh, yeah. All right, so that is, that's what we've got going. This is the easy bean salad, and it really is easy now. You're probably thinking, okay, really? She's telling us just to pour beans out of a can? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is just that easy. I'm really a lazy vegan, lazy cook. I like to say I'm a functional cook. I'm not a gourmet cook. I was a single working mom, and all I wanted to do at the end of the day is come home to my three kids and get healthy food on the table in a hurry. So kidney beans. And now, all right, these are the store brands. So these are actually half the price of the highfalutin organic BPA free, it says somewhere on here, can. Um, how big an issue is that? Well, you have to determine how big of an issue it is for you. But I always like to get organic when I can, if you can, if it's in your budget. Uh, sometimes you can get cheap organic food, and all of that is in my book. Lots of tips on how to do that. And here's another Eden variety. As far as I know, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, please feel free to jump in here, put your comments in the side. As I mentioned at the beginning of the call, I can't uh, see comments that are posted on YouTube. I can only see comments posted on Google+. Plus. So hopefully you're, you're watching in that format. And feel free anytime in the call to just jump in with a question or a comment and um, all of that. So 
Um, anyway, I was going to say, correct me if I'm wrong, if you know of another brand that says on right on the label, see right there, it says BPA free lining. So none of that plastic na nonsense. Of course, you know, the inside of these cans don't have any plastic either. So I don't believe that they ever had BPA. And a lot of the companies put BPA in the cans to make it easier to for the stuff to come out because as like you can see in the bottom of this one, um, it's just that I didn't empty this out purposely because it was kind of stuck in there. And I guess that's why they put BPA in there in the first place. All right, we're going to, the only thing I have not um, the only thing I have not done uh, is put in the kidney beans. And so we are, let's see if we can angle this. You know, people think it's so easy to do this. I got to tell you, I worked in TV, obviously, as you saw. I was a TV anchor. I was a TV reporter. I was, a, I've been a TV producer, a photographer and uh, also a chef. I've done each of those things individually. And doing what I'm doing now, it combines all five of those jobs. And it can be crazy. And I just feel so glad when the technology works. So here we go. We're just uh, pouring the kidney beans into a, into a uh, strainer. And then we're just going to rinse it off. And if you're lucky enough to have one of these cool spray nozzles. It really gets the, the water and anything that's stuck to the bean off of it. So that's kind of cool. And we're going to give it a good shake and put these beans in an appropriate part of the palette. And I just love all the different colors of the beans. The darker the bean is, it's just going to have a little bit more iron in it. Beans are full of iron anyway, but just keep that in mind. People are always asking, where do you get your protein? Where do you get your calcium? Where do you get your iron? Yeah, it's all in the plants. You really get everything you need. Okay, so the other thing we're going to do next, I will, as the photographer, hopefully not shut down the operation here, you know, I put my name up there so you know who I am, but obviously you know who I am. I may have to take that off in future calls. What I'm showing you now here, this is cool. I have the beans uh, sitting in three different kinds of lettuces. This is actually called red Boston lettuce. I didn't even know there was red Boston lettuce. I know there's red leaf lettuce, and that looks very similar, but these were actually called red Boston lettuce, and then, of course, this is the green Boston lettuce. I love Boston lettuce. It's so tender and sweet compared to other lettuces, and then, of course, I also have a little bit of romaine, and I always like, when I can, to buy lettuces that are in the open like we just saw. Now, this one, I'm trying to get it in the picture here. <laughs> the technical director. So you can see it came in a plastic uh, container. And, you know, these are shipped probably from California. Hopefully they don't run out of water too soon because we really do love their food this time of year. Um, but, you know, there are different ways you can get the lettuce. And all of it's good. Whatever is easy and whatever lettuce, whatever greens you like, it's all wonderful. All right. So we're going to be cutting now our or um, red pepper. <clears throat> the food has been generously provided by Fresh Market. Love them, love them, love their food. And most of it, not all, uh, most of the produce is organic, or you can get organic options. So hopefully you saw that. Um, let me just move a few things out of the way. And actually, I'm going to toss the cans because we don't need to see those anymore. Oh, yeah. Ah, well, guess what? Didn't make that one. <laughs> I love live TV. Okay. And poor Snazzy, thing, I expect he's going to come running soon. Oh, no. Yeah, he's there. Okay. Well, I would pick up the laptop and show you him searching around for a scrap of food. Because he knows when he hears the knife cutting that that is his cue to come in and clean up. All right, if I were closer to the sink, I would run the red pepper under the water just to get rid of those seeds. No big deal. 
and you know you can take the pith off here see that's called pith but mm, i just ate it it doesn't taste bad but some people like to take the pith off the food off the peppers all right red peppers are a little sweeter than green peppers a little more expensive too because i guess they have to stay on the vine a little bit longer when i belong to a csa a community supported agriculture farm it was very easy for them to grow all kinds of peppers. I live in Southwest Florida. And now that I travel on book tours so much, I haven't been able to stay with the CSA. But, um, and hopefully you guys are able to see the questions and answers. So if anybody belongs to a CSA, please let me know where. You can just write that in the margin, the right margin on the side there. If you like, along with where you're from, I keep asking that. Um, you know, sometimes people are a little hesitant, but I always like to know. If you can, tell me where you're from. You know, I try and make this hangout something that we can all do together and be sort of like a international global cyber meetup because a lot of us don't get to vegan potlucks or vegan meetup groups. They're too far away. So that's how I envision our little session together, aside from the cooking. All right, so we're going to put uh, a little red onion here. I think we'll just use half of it. This is all going in the easy bean salad. Really easy. And here goes the onion. I love, I always talk about my ceramic knives. They're just so sharp and really sharper than any stainless knife I've ever had. Very easy to cut through those onions quickly so we are not crying too much over spilt dairy milk. All right. So if we have anybody on the call who is new to the vegan universe, it's so easy to eat vegan. means nothing with a mother or face that in theory you are buying, you are eating. Some people are vegan for health. Some people do it to help animals. And some people do it for all of the, the above. All right. We're going to move this beautiful salad within range here. And let's see if we can't get a nice aerial shot of what that salad looks like. Yeah. All right. So we'll put the onions off to this side here. Again, creating this beautiful palette of color. And I always like to do pretty things with the red because it's always so striking. Now, the nice thing about this salad, you can make it without the lettuce. And I love to do salads that don't necessarily include greens because people always think you got to have a salad that's full of greens. Well, no, you don't. And so, I mean, I love to have green salads, of course, but this is just a way of trying to entice people to eat something that's even sounds remotely like a salad. And uh, when I go to potlucks, this is one of my favorite things to bring because it is so easy. Now, one of the things I did want to mention is that you can certainly use a pressure cooker, and I actually pulled one out tonight, but I think I'm going to knock over my dishes here if I try and get it. But, you know, it's great to be able to cook things from scratch, absolutely. Um, but if it's a matter of convenience, certainly getting the canned beans is the way to get it done. Okay. Now, this recipe calls for salad dressing, a light... Um, vinegar, uh, oil and vinegar, or just a light Italian dressing. And, um, oh, I just see a comment. Oh, you know, I wanted to tell you also that we have a two-minute delay. So thank you, um, Jody. I think that was you posting. Uh, no CSA due to I travel so much, but I love my Urban Oaks Farmer's Market in New Britain, Connecticut. Oh, how cool is that? All right. So thank you for that. All right. So what I've done, you know, I'm just using one of those good seasonings cruets that uh, my <clears throat> husband, <laughs> uh, you know, bought. And um, so, you know, you can follow the directions in the book, too. I have lots of salad dressings, but this one I'm just sort of throwing together 
to make it easy. And, you know, so many store and uh, I thought I would try and just use some Italian seasonings, just straight Italian seasonings without any of the other junk that you get in some of the other stores that have all that prepackaged and probably not so healthy uh, uh, of a dressing. So we've got the seasonings in there. I also have uh, some water and um, let's see, the last thing then will be oil. Now, oil is very controversial. You know, why does everything have to be so controversial? I don't know. But um, this is going to spread out over this entire salad. So um, you don't have to add oil. And if you have existing or beginning heart disease, there is some research that would suggest that maybe you want to avoid the, uh, the added oil. So, you know, were our paleolithic relatives stomping around on flax seeds to get the oil out? No. So now if you're following the directions on here, it would say to fill the oil up to the, the top, you know, all of this. And I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put a little oil in. Um, and it doesn't, again, have to be something that you add to your dressing. But some people like the flavor. And if that's what it takes to get people interested in eating their salads, then uh, I am all for that. So we're going to snap the lid on here and just give it a good shake. And you can see how all the spices from that packet, just like the stuff, the expensive stuff you buy at the grocery store. And, I, and I'm thinking it's got to be a lot cheaper to make it this way. All right, so we've put that all over there, and we will give it a good toss here. Now, let's, I want to make sure that you see that, how pretty that is. I should get my camera and post it on Instagram, but it's probably not going to happen. All right, so we are going to mix it all up. And, you know, if we were eating out in the sunlight, and I always encourage people to do that um, because, first of all, we need to get our vitamin D. And even if you can just get your lunch outside, that would be one way to get that sunshine vitamin wherever you are. So when you eat outside, boy, the colors really pop. So you can see how it mixes up. And um, I like to spread my leaves, just kind of pull them out so that... Uh, there's this kind of decorative border around the salad bowl. So there you have it. All right, let's move on to dish number two. This is penny for pennies. And, oh, yes, hi, there we are. Okay, so this is a two-step dish. Now, we are, I'm just going to angle this a little bit more here, get the camera in position. And what we're doing here is uh, we have a double boiler, which is really cool. It makes cooking this, this recipe very easy. So um, first thing we're going to do is get some water boiling. I've got four cups of water in here, and I have two different kinds of pasta. I've already made one of them just to see how it would turn out. I made this gluten-free brown rice pasta, and they really come a long way on brown rice pasta or, or rice pasta. I used to make it... Um, 20, 30 years ago, and it would all stick together and be disgusting. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I made some of this earlier, and I'll show it to you later. But we'll get, uh, this is um, an Italian macaroni product made from farro, which is kind of an interesting, uh, let's read about farro. Known for 5,000 years, this old type of grain, tritic triticum, or I've actually heard it referred to as triticale, is full of vitamins, fibers, fibers and minerals, and was appreciated by the Romans because it was easy to, di easy to di digest. All right, we're getting the water boiling there while I'm talking. Um, therefore, we have decided to use this old food tradition for our appreciating for our daily diet. Uh, simple and light sauces are advisable for better uh, appreciation of the pasta. So comes in a bag, and it looks kind of like whole wheat. Um, and I have had this in my deep, dark past. And I'll just show you uh, what it looks like. It's kind of got the, these ridges on it. So that's what will hold the sauce. Now, we'll wait till the water is boiling. And while we are waiting for that, I'm going to cut up some broccoli. And 
carefully, not knock everything over. All right, so we're getting our knife, which is, well, we'll use the short one. Now, this broccoli has a, a big stem on it, of course. And uh, you can certainly eat the whole stem. A lot of people want to cut it off, so it's very fibrous. You can uh, steam it, and then, uh, or if you want, you can also put it in your um, your garbage or make compost out of it. And this is still a little bit thick, but what we're going to do is just kind of cut around the most fibrous parts on the. Anybody have a compost? No? Well, we'll see. We got a two minute delay. All right. And then we will cut just the little florets off of it. And I try to make the most of what we've got going. It's always important to try and use as much food. We waste so much food in this country, don't we? And and so many kids are not eating healthy stuff like this. So any way we can get them to do that, it is important. So we're just cutting down the stalk as much as we can. And, you know, the thinner you cut these, the water, the steam will more evenly cook the broccoli. So some people don't like to eat their vegetables because they're too fibrous, but actually it's the fiber that's good. But if you cut it up a certain way, um, you know, that's why blenders are so popular. It really breaks down that fiber. It makes it a little bit easier to chew or swallow as the case may be. And some people say, well, we really should be chewing our food and not doing the whole blender thing. But gosh, who doesn't like a good blender and a good smoothie on a hot summer day, which is coming up. All right, so our broccoli is ready to go, and let's see where we are here on the boiling water. I'm using one of these induction burners, and they're really great. Um, this uh, The Penny for Pennies also has a uh, sauce that we're going to put together, and already in the blender, I have one and three-fourths cup rice vinegar, so that is this. And you'll notice this is natural. It says natural and unseasoned. They make they make seasoned rice vinegar, which is nothing but high fructose corn syrup. So you want to try and avoid that if you can. And then the next ingredient is minced shallots or an onion. And as I think you can see, I already have the onions in there, the uh, green onions. And then two tablespoons of chopped. Uh, ginger, and because we're going to be depending on our industrial strength Vitamix here, and I bought this with my own money, I didn't get paid a penny for saying that, but it will chop it to smithereen so we don't have to chop it very, uh, very finely or anything like that, just enough to make sure that it gets well blended. Two tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce, that's what we've got going here, and um, we're just adding that to the mix. And next we have, we have, we have um, toasted sesame oil. Now, again, the caveat about oil, you don't have to use it, okay? But some people like the taste. They like um, the way it, it makes the consistency of the sauce. You don't have to use it. So this is really optional. But I tell you, this smells um, smells really good. This only calls, uh, calls for a half teaspoon. So this is a really small amount. And it's um, it, it adds just a, a very nice flavor, I think, to the total sauce here. So sort of like the whole Mary Poppins thing, just a spoonful of medicine makes, I mean, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. Spoonful, just not a spoonful of oil, just a little bit of oil, OK? Um, but again, you know, check with your doctor if you have a concern about that. OK, so one garlic clove. Where's our garlic clove? I'm thinking, yeah, it's already in there. It was in with the ginger, OK? And then hot pepper sauce. OK, so you can use the old Tabasco, the standby. Or what I like to do, because you know, it's just kind of interesting to be more in control of how spicy your recipe is, is just to take a little dab. First of all, I'm going to see 
Now, normally, if I were serving other people, I wouldn't be putting my finger in the food. But I want to see how spicy these chopped green chilies are or jalapenos. And these are, I got, what did I get? Mild. Yeah, these really are mild. So not hugely spicy. So, you know, throw in a few little pinches of that. Or you can just go ahead and add your Tabasco too. Not too much though. You can experiment with that. Whatever works for you. It's all good. All right. So then um, we have our water. And the last thing is a fourth cup of unsalted roasted cashews. And that's what these are. So those are going in. <coughs> uh, I did want to show you now. This is the... I got two different varieties of cashews. Um, these are unsalted roasted, and these are conventional, not organic. Try and get organic if you can where you are, but some places just don't have them. And these are raw. You can also use just plain raw. These are not toasted. So I wanted you to see the difference, and either one will work. All right, so let's go ahead and put the top on. And we'll blend up the sauce. You can blend it up as smooth as you would like. Um, it can be really chunky, or you can just let it kind of hang out there uh, as and let it blend and be very smooth. All right, so um, we are going to now put our pasta in here in the boiling water. It takes about nine minutes, and this has a convenient timer, which I will set. And it just kind of quits working. It will let you know when it goes off. And there we go. All right. So that's the pasta. Now at about five minutes into it, uh, after it boils, and you want to keep stirring the pasta, no matter what kind you are using. And this is uh, the whole grain farro, which is really fun to use. All right, it's boiling now. And these induction burners are great, but I find they really cook things very quickly and also at a high temperature. They work by magnets. I don't even begin to understand the technology. But this will stay boiling at uh, the second lowest setting. So that's pretty amazing. It has 10 settings. And you can do it by temperature as well. All right. So what's cool about this is that we can then, um, a few minutes into this, we will add, and I probably need to get a little protection here. Because the top was on top of the boiling water. Now, uh, by the way, this is kind of cool. You can actually cook something in that too. It's, it can be a triple boiler, putting that on the top. So we're going to put the double boiler part, the middle section, on top here. Isn't that cool? And uh, after another few minutes, we will put the broccoli in there. So if you have any questions, please feel free to jump in and uh, Again, I am just trying to make this uh, an international cyber global hangout for vegans because we don't often get a lot of support in our communities. One of the things that I did promise that we would talk about is vegan news you can use. That's something that I do on my YouTube channel. If any of you are subscribers there, I try and update any vegan news that I see that crosses my wire, crosses my radar um, two or three times a week. And I'm really passionate about that because I think there's just a whole lot of vegan news going on right now. And I guess I'm just a news junkie at heart. And what better way to get news out there than to promote good health and uh, fun stuff. So I um, let's find my, my little vegan news sheet here, my cheat sheet. And what I do is I just um, go in and just Google search the word vegan and see what um, pops up. I need to turn the temperature down just a little bit. All right, and 
let's see, another couple minutes, I'll put the broccoli in. So the biggest vegan news of the week is that Veg News is back. Uh, how many of you are were subscribers to Veg News? Um, you can let me know in the margin if you've been following all that. Um, but that was a great magazine, and I think it's going to be great again. There was um, a little thing going on between the two... I don't know what to call them, organizers. Uh, and I won't get into all the specifics other than just to say that the magazine is back. There was a court proceeding and uh, the good guys won and the magazine is back and um, they may need a little money to get going, but I'm sure that will work out. So Colleen Holland, she's the publisher. She's awesome. And uh, my publisher actually was just talking to me yesterday, asking me where my fourth book is, is because I've been like so busy traveling. I just got back from Tallahassee's Veg Fest and all that kind of fun stuff. So um, just, you know, a lot of stuff going on. You know, being an athlete, it takes some time and work. And so I just have to kind of shut myself up in my writer's cave to get that book done. But anyway, my publisher was, was my publisher was all excited that uh, Veg News is back, and obviously I am too. All right, so some other stor uh, other stories in the vegan news. Know the difference of going vegan or vegetarian. According to meat lovers everywhere, vegetarians and vegans have been protesting animal cruelty for the sake of insignificant animals. I don't know who is writing this. You know, you just see these headlines in sort of a grab-and-go kind of thing. But yes, it is important to know the difference between vegan and vegetarian. Uh, somebody just sent me a video today saying, oh, you got to check check out this site. This guy's uh, right up your alley. And he was a vegetarian and using honey. And it's like, you know, people are slowly learning all this stuff as we are trying to get out there and educate. Uh, vegans and barbecue lovers coexist. This is an article in the Chicago Tribune. And I love that all these mainstream uh, uh, media outlets are picking up the vegan story because it's so important and getting the word out. Um, and while I'm gabbing here, let's go ahead and put the broccoli in the double boiler and then we can uh, <clears throat> probably going to turn up the temperature just a little bit more and put my lid back on and that should be <clears throat> good to go all right um we'll get back to vegan news in a minute but one of the things <clears throat> I probably need to get some water. And I've got here also, by the way, this was the whole ginger I was using. We've got some gourmet olives. And I, you know, my recipe doesn't call for this, but I just thought these were so beautiful. I thought we would use them. So they're all, they all have uh, seeds in them. So you can use whatever magic you want to get the seeds out. If anybody has any better ideas than just using a paring knife, please feel free to write that down in the margin. We've got about a two minute delay. So um, all questions, all ideas are welcome. And if you have some vegan news you want to share, um, and we're talking about like real news, not promoting somebody's <laughs> product, but um, news headlines that um, are interesting, please let us know. And I'm sure we talked about this last week. I'm sure many of you saw the John Stewart Daily Show, the Daily Show with Gene Bauer on it. And John Stewart kind of said he was almost there, meaning almost vegan. His wife actually is vegan. And, uh, you know, the times they are a changing. So if you want to, for this pasta recipe, that's what I'm cutting up the olives for, you can put this on. Um, the topping of your pasta. Now, you know, you can certainly go with the olives that are already pitted. You don't have to do this labor-intensive stuff. I try and keep my recipes, especially in Eat Vegan on $4 a day, as simple and easy as possible. Um, but sometimes when you're at the store, you just do this impulse buying thing, and these olives just look so luscious. And, you know, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes, like, food like this, especially the black olives, maybe it's just something from our childhood if we ate these kinds of foods as a kid that you really just, uh, they call to you, you know. All right, well, that's all we'll do for right now. Let me wipe my hands. And I wanted to show you a couple of other things uh, from the food department. And with our bean salad here, my notes just fell over there. 
Okay, so back to the bean salad. There are some things we can do with this besides just being uh, in a salad. So you can get these nice blue corn uh, tacos here, and it comes with a separator. So all of these are in pristine shape. None of them are broken as they come out of the box. And you want to just make sure you open it enough so that it does get... Uh, nice and pretty like that. So that is one of our dishes that way. And another thing that I found, I always like to show these new things because, uh, you know, when I started doing this 35 years ago, none of these products existed, it seemed. You know, it was kind of this disgusting soy cheese, if you were lucky to have that. So these are called falafel chips. <clears throat> And they're made with garbanzo beans, you know. Uh, these folks. Oh, oh, those were navy beans. Sorry. All right, my garbanzo can is gone. But anyway, kind of like that. And uh, so that's what they look like. And mm, they're really, really good. I think. You know, I'm not a big chip person, but those were really good. I think they're not too salty, but there's a little bit of salt, and um, they're baked but they don't necessarily taste that way. So very delicious. All right. Our pasta is almost ready. And I think, and we have one more surprise for you after we get the pasta served. I always like to do dessert. Yes. Okay. I hear you. Thank you very much. Oh, and our broccoli is beautifully steamed. Let's put this over here. And... We'll take the lid off and you get to see. You can almost see the reflection. Oh, one other thing I forgot to talk about and use. Um, this recipe calls for baked tofu that you can often buy at the store. Well, Fresh Market, I love them, but they did not have baked tofu. So, you know, it's actually better, I think, to make your own. And this was so easy. I just got this dish. I got a block of tofu, which they had, and I marinated it. Well, first I put this dish on top of the tofu and squeezed the water out. And it's really important to do that when you bake tofu, to squeeze the water out. And then the other thing, um, I marinated it in some, oh, it's over there. OK, so I marinated it in this teriyaki sauce. So just let it sit after the water was squeezed out for about an hour. And then I baked it for another hour. So that's how it turned out. So we are going to cut that up and put that on top of our pasta. All right, let me turn off the water. And I'm going to grab my big serving bowl here. That's where I've gone, in case you're wondering. Now, I wanted to show you also the rice pasta, which is over on this plate. going to move some things around so we can get to all of this. So this is the rice pasta, and I'm going to put that in one part of the bowl. And it didn't stick together, as I said. It was really quite good. And we will remove, I think I'm just going to put the broccoli in the bowl right now. And that way it'll make it easier to drain the noodles into the double boiler. I actually have a colander over here already out. So I'm just putting it in the colander. We give it a good shake. You'll have to trust, my, trust me on that. And we're going to... Let me turn this back over here. We're going to... Put not all of the noodles in here. But enough. And we're going to take our knife and cut up the baked tofu. And let's bring it down so you can see that. So you just cut it in a grid fashion. You don't have to use all of this tofu. It'll keep in the fridge for a couple days maybe longer. I just think this is really even better than anything you can make in the store. 
So, pardon my fingers, but like I said, you're not eating with me tonight. I wish you were. I wish we could all eat together. But let's hear it for smell vision All right, and what we're going to do after we get the tofu on top is put the sauce on the pasta. So I've got both kinds of noodles. You can see the difference. The farro, let's uh, hold that up nice to the camera. And that really, the farro is this one, the darker noodle, and then the rice noodle, um, a little bit lighter in color. So we're getting our tofu on the pasta. And you can also, after um, the recipe actually calls for this, cooking all of this in one big skillet and kind of uh, putting the sauce in the skillet as well, but for the sake of simplicity and live television here, we are going to just pour this nicely blended sauce over the pasta. So here we go. And I'm probably going to put most of it on there, not all of it. Again, I don't want it to overflow. And let's give it a little mix. We will use, yeah, let's grab a fork. And just spread the sauce all over the pasta. And I hope you agree that looks pretty yummy but more importantly is how it tastes. Oh, come back here. Now, by the way, you see I have some pistachios out here. Um, pistachios are another nut you can use in this. You can use it on top. And the one of the reasons I got it too is just to show you, you have to eat nuts in moderation and nature puts them in shells. So it takes us some time to peel them, gives our brain a little bit of time to catch up uh, with our stomach and um, it's just uh, one of the ways that nature says, slow down, don't eat your food so fast. So now we're just putting the olives. You can certainly use Kalamata olives, um, anything that is easy and convenient. You don't have to use olives at all, but it just adds a little contrast and color. And now for the taste test. Let's see how we did. All right, this is the part where you just have to use your imagination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's really good with the olives too. Yum. All right, I know I shouldn't eat out of the serving bowl. Okay, mom. All right, we're going to put this over here. You know, I have nightmares because I did work in TV and, you know, Teleprompters went backwards or not at all. And, you know, sometimes I have this fear that things are going to just fall over because we are working in a very tight quarters here, but in very tight quarters. But um, let's give this a go around here. Mm -mm -mm. All right. That dressing was nice. Mm. The spices, that's the one where I made the dressing. So that's very cool. All right. The last thing we're going to do. As I always like to close with dessert and a little bit of chocolate, because to every life, a little chocolate must come, I'm just saying. And uh, in a wild and crazy world, you know, chocolate is a good antioxidant, and yes, it can make you feel better. So what I am really impressed with, especially at places like Fresh Market, although I haven't really studied it as much at other places, but I know this is kind of a trend, is all of the different labels on the bottom. Boy, when you think that um, <laughs> you just can't have enough full disclosure and labeling. So we have here uh, Certified Cocoa Rainforest Alliance. That's important. Verified Non-GMO Project. That's the second label. Then Certified Gluten-Free, if that's important. For some people it is. For some people like me, I do not have a gluten intolerance, thank goodness. Um, and then this final label, I haven't seen this one in a while, made with real salt. I mean, do they have pretend salt? Does anybody know? Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. But, you know, you can never have too many labels, right? So, but most important with chocolate 
cacao, any of that, that would be fair trade. So, of course, I have to sample this for you. And this is uh, dark chocolate with sea salt and almonds. So I have actually been seeing some chocolate made with quinoa. And it kind of has this same texture where there's chunks in it that you almost think it's nuts, but it's really quinoa. But in this case, it's really nuts. Yeah. Well, that's good. Mm. You know, the sea salt really heightens the flavor. I don't know how or why, but it does. It just really brings out the chocolate. It jumps out on your tongue. This is 72% uh, um, cocoa. And, okay, just pausing for a moment here. So, they're all different kinds of chocolate now that are fair trade. Just a huge variety. This says 10% net profits donated. Doesn't say where they're donated, but I'm sure it's to a worthy cause, right? Better than not. All right. So if you have any questions, please feel free to post on Google+. Plus. That's the only place I can see the questions. Um, we will just go back for a little quick check here of vegan news, why it's so hard to love fashion and be vegan. Really? I don't think so. There are so many vegan options. Where are they getting these headlines? I mean, there's moon shoes. There's just lots of vegan clothing and shoe options. And frankly, most running shoes these days are vegan anyway, um, because leather cows, what they use from cows or wherever they get the leather is more expensive. And runners always care about the lighter the weight, the shoes, the, the better they are. So leather weighs more than the synthetics. So, you know, I, I hate to see some of these kinds of headlines, but at least they're being discussed. And where you know that headlines are, that people are, are chiming in on a blog and letting them know. All right. Oh, PETA this week. <laughs> Did any of you see their sheep shearing post? I posted it on my Facebook page. And boy, Aaron, you never know if they're really trolls on your page or what's going on. But, um, you know, I know this has been an issue for a long time. And the bottom line is, and what happened when I post reposted PETA's link to this brutal sheep shearing thing, people said, oh, you know, I have a sheep farm and, you know, my sheep are humanely treated. But you just don't know. So, you know, why do we even need to remove the hair from sheep? Um, somebody said, oh, because it's like getting a haircut. It feels good. Well, maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. The point is there are many options to doing that. So why do it? And that's one of the headlines from this past week. Uh, vegan punk singer, vegan singer Pink slams fat shaming weight bullies. I feel beautiful. Singer Pink, who follows a mostly vegan diet, slammed fat shaming weight bullies who mocked her weight gain, saying she feel, feels beautiful at any size. Um, vegan lifestyle would avoid humans' bird flu concerns. We can help prevent bird flu and other foodborne illnesses and save billions of animals from pain and suffering by eating vegan foods. Okay. Signal Hill Girl 8 named PETA's 2015 cutest vegan kid. Okay. Good for her. Yes. Uh, that was a voting contest, much like the contest that I participated in last year. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, yeah, I got PETA's Sexiest Vegan over 50. Don't feel like it right now after slaving in a hot kitchen, but we runners do clean up occasionally once in a while. And, you know, the reason I participated in that contest um, was just to help PETA because it's a grassroots organization and so many out there just don't get attention. Uh, I didn't have to do anything wild and crazy. In fact, uh, the, the voting really was about what are you doing to help animals? That's what makes, especially people our age, I guess, as people define sexy, whatever that means. And, uh, um, we just do what we can to try and help organizations like PETA. And they do a whole lot of good, as many other organizations do, and they don't get anywhere near the funding that the meat and dairy industries do. And that's just a whole other hour program we could talk about. If you have any questions, we are coming up on the top of the 10 o'clock hour. We have about six minutes left. And um, I'm always just happy to try and be available to answer any questions, whether it's regard to your training program as a certified personal trainer and runner, vegan runner for the better part of 35 years, minus when my three daughters were young because they didn't have the fancy running strollers that they do now. But I'm happy to help uh, either here or on my website. If you're feeling a little shy, vegcoach.com is where I live with my three books. 
eat vegan on four dollars a day kitchen divided and paleo vegan and a soon well yeah sometime in the next 12 months book on vegan fitness because that's really my passion and uh, well everything like that is a passion i love to burst try to burst vegan myths and uh um I appreciate everybody who is listening in on the call, and I hope you've gotten some ideas on how to make your life easier in the kitchen. It doesn't have to be complicated. It really is so easy and incredibly cheap to eat this way. Oh my goodness, beans are like um, you know a dime a serving. And somebody once in one of my talks stood up and said, you know, beans just haven't gone up much in 30 years. <laughs> And that's really true compared to meat and dairy. So my whole thing is if you replace meat and dairy with beans and greens, you have plenty of money left over for all the produce that everybody goes, oh, it's so expensive. No, it is not. So um, we have a two-minute delay here. So I will cut off at 10 o'clock. That's about five minutes from now. And... Um, just feel free to ask any questions. Tell us where you're from if you're getting to be feeling uh, bold about that or not. Um, you know what I like about these noodles over here? They didn't stick together. And that's just, uh, I don't know why, maybe just stirring the pasta every minute or so was a good thing. Um, and, uh, oh, I wanted to show you because I, I can move around a little bit more. Oh, I guess I need to do some more weight training or something. Um, this is a Fagor pressure cooker, even though it doesn't say that, but when you search it on Amazon, that's this is what will show up. And, you know, they make them so easy now. You know, there are these very expensive, complicated, like, uh, multi-cookers, and I actually ordered one once, and I sold it pretty soon afterwards on Facebook because it was just too complicated. It was too big. And this is just so easy. It takes 30 minutes or less to cook any of the beans that I have in the salad. And um, it's even color coded. I mean, you have to be kind of an, an idiot not to be able to figure this out. And you just, you won't blow up the kitchen or the pot won't go flying off or anything like that. See, it just slides on like that. And you turn on the temperature, you slide this little lever here it locks in and then this button pops up when it reaches pressure and that's when you turn the temperature back and you just want to keep um, the little orange button level for the length of time that it takes to cook uh, cook your beans. And I have some guides in my books about how to cook beans, either just stove top like we did or, or like a um, we would do if we were just cooking them on top of the stove versus in the pressure cooker. Or um, I also have some guides on how to how long you need to cook in the pressure cooker. So it's just so easy to do this. I hope um, if you have any questions, you'll feel free to contact me. If you jump on my website, VegCoach, you can just email me directly from there, ejones at vegcoach.com. And uh, I'm always happy to try and answer your, qu your questions. So... Um, I hope everybody's been having a good week doing your vegan thing. And uh, I'm kind of curious to know if anybody is involved in sports or uh, running, swimming, doing anything like that uh, competitively. The national senior games are coming up. And, you know, I'm seventh in the U.S. from the last national senior games in my age group in the 1,500 meters, 10th in the 400 meters. I'm much more of a sprinter than an endurance runner. But I'm thinking I'm not going to go this year. It's really expensive, and you can do a whole lot of running uh, in locally in 5K races, you know, $20 to $30 for those versus like $5,000 is what it would cost me to go to a week's worth of the National Senior Games. It was great fun, um, but it takes a huge amount of time and training and uh since I'm getting ready to do my next book, it may be kind of challenging to do all of that, but we'll have to see. Uh, you know, it's it's an interesting journey trying to be out there showing people that you can run on a vegan diet, but I love it. And it is, so many people will come up to me as I'm holding one of my race group, uh, race race awards, um, 
like I showed you at the beginning. And, you know, people say, oh, you can't run on a vegan diet. You know, where do you get your protein? Like we always hear that. So it really is challenging and fun. And, uh, you know, mainly I run because it is fun and I, I love it. Um, and to be able to get outside, we need our vitamin D. So I encourage you to find a way to get out there so that you don't have to supplement. But if you live north, you know, you might have to supplement. But uh, vitamin D is especially important for everybody, but really for vegans too, because we need to, to get it from natural sources if we can. All right, uh, one last check for questions. Not seeing any. I'll give it another 60 seconds and then I'm going to jump off here and this will be up on YouTube and you can see the full program there if you missed any part of this and I hope you have enjoyed our wonderful food. I'm seeing it's kind of interesting. We've had a lot more people actually jump on the call in the last few minutes. So I do want to show you what we made in case you missed it and I don't know who ate part of that must have been the dog I guess but you know just one of the ideas you can use for the easy bean salad and then our lovely penny for pennies pasta from both of these recipes are from eat vegan on four dollars a day and uh, just trying to make your life easier and help you save money so you too can spend $30 to enter a race and go show everybody that vegans can do it. All right, everyone. Again, if you have any questions, do feel free to contact me through vegcoach.com. Have a great week and we'll see you every Wednesday, same time, same station, as long as I am able. And again, thank you. And as long as I'm able to get uh, keep getting food donated from Fresh Market, they are, by the way, all over the country and growing. And uh, it's an interesting journey. So thank you to them for donating the food. And we'll see you next week, same time. Got to run.